Okay, now I'm recording it. <laughs> For those of you who want to set up VirtualBox, and I don't blame you, and that's my emulator of choice, I'm going to show you the instructions for what you need to do so you can do it in the background of while we're doing everything else that we're going on here. So we have this virtualbox.org. If you just go to the virtualbox itself and you can go to the downloads folder, which is where I was before. Over on the left hand side you see downloads. It takes you to the same screen that we were just at a few seconds ago. If you're on a Windows system, you want the Windows version. The Mac system, you want the Mac system. If you click on I'm on a Mac system, so I'm going to click on this guy here. It should download an image file for me on the Mac. It should download a, a Windows compatible one for the Windows system. When you, once you have it downloaded, you double click on it, it installs in two seconds. It's a really easy install. And it gives you a little icon. So you download VirtualBox. It's free. Get it from this site. Don't go to a CNET site or something. I don't know. People go from weird sites to get stuff. After you have it downloaded, there's two things you got to do. You got to write a little script like this one here that's going to load it. But before you load it, you need something to load. So you're going to need to put it in an x86 uh, virtual machine, uh, excuse me, ISO file. So let me show you what I'm talking about. My virtual box is configured to run one, two, three, four, five different VMs. These are virtual machines. So VirtualBox will load the virtual machine. The easiest way to do it is from an ISO file. So I have, if you have a USB disk, come on up here and I can give you, not right now, but in a few minutes, <laughs> I can give you the ISO file. Other than that, you can download the ISO file from the internet. Don't remember exactly where I got that one in, but I'm going to search on the file name, and I'm probably going to be able to find it. Android Box uh, 2.3. Okay, that's not going to work for me, so I'm going to actually just type in Android uh, ISO. Android ISO for PC. But what we want are the emulate. We want the x86. So I'm going to put in here Android x86 mm, ISO for PC. There's a couple of different sites. These are basic um, diff people's different builds. They took the x86 Android system. Remember in the beginning I said it was a Unix system. You can build it. Well, you have the build tools are available. They built it, but they built it to work on Intel processors. <laughs> so they're x86. ISO images is commonly referred to as a live CD. So if you go, actually this is the site here I may have gotten it from. If you go to this site here, oh I see everybody's downloading. Um, you see down here, ah this is may, probably where I got it from. ASUS EPCs, ASUS Nah, I can't remember. Mine's kind of old. Don't remember where I got it from. You, I can give you mine as soon as I get done with these instructions. Or search on my file name, you'll find it. All you need is one of these ISO files for the type of architecture that you're working on. So if you have an EPC, I know there's some for a Compax, there's an ASUS laptop. These are installs so that you can actually take this ISO disk, burn it to a CD, slap it in there, install this operating system on your hardware if you wanted to. But we're not going to do that. We're going to install it into the virtual box, and we're going to run it like an emulator. So let me show you how that's done. So you downloaded and installed the VirtualBox software. You got an ISO image. Where, what ISO image are you going to get? You're going to search on it, you're going to find one, or you're going to come up when I'm all done and I'll give you my ISO image. It's a generic ISO image should work just fine for everybody. And this is how it works. We open up VirtualBox, and I'm just going to make a new one. And I'm going to show you the easiest way that you can possibly do this. You go new, <laughs> and uh, you give it a name. I'm going to call this one um, uh, class emulator. For the type, put it on Linux or leave it on Linux. For the version, I put it on 2.6. Could put it on 2.4. <coughs> 
it's a Linux emulator that you're running. So put it on one of the Linux varieties. 2.6 is going to run a little bit slower than 2.4. It's a little bit heavier. Footprint, you can put it on 2.4. I find a lot of compatibility with 2.6. In fact, you can do this right now if you have VirtualBox downloaded. You just won't be able to put the ISO in until we're ready. Press continue. Memory size that you're going to want to use for this, you can leave it on the default. This is the amount of RAM you're going to allocate towards the vi virtual box. Um, 256 is pretty good. Pretty good amount of RAM. So it looks like I can do all the way up to 8 gigs. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to press continue. Do not add a virtual hard drive. We're going to run it like a live CD. The ISO file that you're going to download is a live CD. You can just run it from there. So I'm going to go create. Just press on the, so do not create a hard, otherwise it's going to take up unnecessary hard disk space. If you want to install it, then you want to create a little hard disk. I'd do maybe a gig or less, maybe 500 megabytes or something. Not going to take up that much space. That means you're actually going to install it in instead of running it like a live disk. If you're using it for an emulator, the live disk approach is okay. I have both here, and I'll tell you why you want to use one or the other. But let's just continue, get this one working. See, now on the bottom it says class emulator, but if I run it, nothing's going to happen. It's going to say, select a startup disk. <laughs> well, I actually have a startup disk. This is the ISO file I downloaded. So I'm going to click on this file here, and I'm going to go out to my home directory, to my documents, to, let's pick this one, the ISO file. And I'm going to press open. And then I'm going to press start. And lo and behold, I'm going to get an emulator. It's going to look like this. And uh, I'm going to go into Versa mode because that one works best on this computer. So I'm going to press return. And there's my emulator running from a live CD. Now I can also do this manually by loading the ISO file into the CD spot, the virtual CD spot. This is running a bit slower because I'm running that recording software. And I also have an Android emulator running in the background, actually. <laughs> so. But it will normally run twice as fast, three times as fast as the regular Android emulators. Here it is. Let's make sure this is the right one, actually, because this is the one I'm going to give out to you guys. This one I like because there's a little any key button that gives, simulates the hardware, so you can press it and click the buttons on the side of the, of the disk should load up eventually. You can also hit settings and in the settings menu that comes up click on the storage icon and it's actually you see it's loaded in here you can do it this way as well you can load it in by clicking on this little button here and then choosing an emulator. I'm choosing an ISO file I'm simulating the boot of this uh, ISO file once you have this installed, there's only one more thing you have to do. You have to write a little text file to connect Android with your, with your VirtualBox. <clears throat> so this one I just called it emulator and I put it in my root folder of my terminal so it's just in my home directory. I put the path in because this isn't in the path. Oh, here we go. So this emulator has a slightly different look than my other emulator had because I moved that one around because I actually installed the other one. <coughs> so I'm going to close this emulator here to show you the other option actually before I show you this, this over here. If I run it again it should automatically pick up that disk that I have in there. But let's take a look at the boot options. If you created a virtual hard disk then it says install Android x86 to hard disk. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> and then uh, you can run through an install and actually install it. So I have two things in my list over here so I can tell the difference between, because I have all of it running. So I have one that's called Android that's an install. If you install it, then you can save stuff to it. You can customize the settings. Make the, I make the font bigger so you can see it from a distance. You can customize it to meet your needs and save stuff on it. This one has a bunch of stuff saved in it. It's just like an operating system running on top of your operating system. The ones over here that said, and this one's also, is a 4.0 version. 
of the same thing that's installed. These guys that I put the word emulator on, these are ISO disks that are booting up and they're live CD disks, nothing saved on them. So I use this naming convention so I can tell the difference. If you're going to install it, you can actually just leave this entry. You can actually remove the entry as well by just clicking on uh, remove here. We'll remove it. If you don't have a hard disk, you don't have to worry about it. The hard disk will go away. So I can say, you know, remove only, delete all files. Well, there's nothing in there, and I don't want to delete all files because then I'm going to leave my ISO file and I won't be able to give it to you. <laughs> but uh, you can easily remove it, try it again, put it in there with um, a hard disk. If you make a virtual hard disk, about 500 to a gig is probably good. And then you can install right from that menu into it. Once you have it installed and it's running, then you look at this. So you need to find where you put the Android Platform Tools folder. On my system, I put it right off my root. So if I come into my home directory here, and it's going to be the same for you. You're just going to have a different look because you have a Windows system. And I go into Android SDKs, or is it under Android? Actually, it's under Android. Android, I have two. Android, and then it's under Platform Tools, Platform Tools, if I run this file right now, this is ADB, which is the ADB file I'm running. So if this is in your path, you don't have to do this. You can just run the ADB. If this is in your path, all you have to do is type in ADB space connect space localhost. In fact, I don't even have to write a script for this. I can just go at this and go new window. If I, if I write ADB, though, I don't think that's not my path. I'm going to get that. So if I go like this, users, hacker. Android <coughs> platform tools <laughs> ADB it's going to ask me for a command line it's going to ask me for parameters because it doesn't know what to do when you run ADB from the Eclipse that's when it's loading up this menu here from you so in clips here when you load it this is running the ADB this is this is the Windows version of it, ADB Manager. So now we're just going to say you you here you ADB connect to connect to this host, and this host that you're going to connect to is localhost, and we're going to put it on five 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 five. So in order to do that, we have to set what's called port forwarding on the on the emulator. So we have to tell it for, we have to tell the emulator to sit on port 5555. So what I did is for convenience sake, since I'm having to retype this over and over again, I wrote, put it into a text file and then I run the text file. And then you have to go into your emulator. I'm just going to open up one of these here. Go into settings. And uh, you're not going to, in the next 10 minutes after you download and look at it, you can thumb through all these different options. You can totally customize this emulator to be what you want it to be. But I'm going to go into a network, a little tab up here, because I want to set the ports on here. And click on port forwarding. And add a rule by pressing on the plus button. And the rule is going to set host port, well, I already have it in here, but 555. Actually, I could put it in here twice if I want to. And the guest port is 555. I'll just hit port 444 so it doesn't match. And then I can remove I can remove it if I don't like it. But set the host and the guest to 5555. Four fives. 5555. Because that's where you're going to set the port to. So when you connect, you're going to connect to localhost, which is your local computer, and then to 5555. <laughs> so when I do that, if I just type it in, actually, ABD connect local host 5555 connected to local host. So I'm taking the ADB manager and I'm connecting it to this 5555 port, which is running off of this emulator. That's all you have to do. You only do it once. And then every time you reboot your computer, you have to run that little script. That's why I put it into a little text file and I run it when I set it up. This is the script. I just wrote it myself in a text file. Yeah, but how do you run it? Um, how do you run it after you write it? Uh, I'm typing dot 
forward slash emulator. <laughs> and it says already connected because I just ran it a few minutes ago. If it's a Windows system, you can make a little desktop icon. It goes to DOS and runs it. It's, it's going to be, it's not really a script. You're just running the command. <laughs> Instead of having to type all that stuff in all the time, you just put it into one system icon or something, you know, when desktop, for a Windows person, a desktop icon, you double-click double, double click on the icon. Mm -hmm. Actually, if that's the case, you can double-click on it, and after you run it, you can actually open up Eclipse after that, <laughs> or something, or open up Eclipse, and then run the script, and then you can put it all in there if you wanted to, like a little batch file, so. So once you have that, you only have to do, you only have to do the setup one time, and then every time that you're going to run the emulators, run the emulator script. I'd do it after you have VirtualBox connected. After you load it, because if it's not loaded, what's this say? Unsaved uh, changes if you proceed. Uh, discard. Okay, cancel. Now I'll just cancel this one. Okay, okay. Then, um, if you're interested in figuring out, well, how do I get internet access on my emulator? That's for this. Leave it on NAT. Don't go through the whole thing here where bridge adapter, network adapter. Most 99.9% .9 of all systems will work on NAT as the setting. When you get this, all you basically do is start the emulator. Oops, it's already running. And then inside of the emulator, you should be able to get internet access. So this should take me to my YouTube channel, which it does, actually. And we have internet access, which is good. <laughs> Who knew? We have internet access. Okay. <laughs> if you see on the bottom of the screen, you'll see buttons. When you click in the emulator to get your mouse out, you'll see it's Shift, on my system it's shift and then the command button. So there's a toggle to release your, your mouse from that. So, And then once you have your emulator running, I just leave it alone. You don't have to reconnect it every time. In fact, you can close VirtualBox at this point. You can close whatever window you ran it in. And then you can go ahead and run your projects. When you run your projects, the first time you run it, you can run a configuration. As an example, I'm going to go back to hello today and I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to go run as and then I'm going to say on the bottom run configurations you don't have to do this it will actually pick it up automatically but you won't have to go through all the prompts every time you do it you'll just create the configuration if I go run configuration then I can tell the project hello today because I clicked on hello today and I'm running configuration and then here where it says target I can specify the target I want to run it on, or I can say always prompt to pick device. <laughs> if I go always prompt to pick device, then I'm get this little window that comes up. Because right now I have two emulators running. And you're going to see that in a few minutes here. Um, if I run it, I have two emulators running. Because lo and behold, when I turned off the video recording, I decided let's just run it again without the recording going on. <laughs> Make sure the project works, <laughs> and it does. This is the Android emulator. It has a blue background because I'm, it's really running low on memory right now. It's normally black. But you can see this is hello, uh, today is the day. So I've got this emulator running, and now because I like this emulator so much, I'm going to leave it running, although I think it's frozen right now. Okay, now it's not. I can leave it running, and in my window, I went through all the trouble of loading it. I might as well just keep it, right? So now I have the Android 2.33 emulator, which I called Android 2. I know that because if I go in, well, I can't go in there, but if I go into my window and I check my ADV manager, I can see I have Android 2 in there. And then I have this one. This one's on 5555. The one I loaded before was on 5554. I believe there's some sequence. I think it starts with 5551, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> it may not. You don't have to use 5555, five, five, five. you can use 6666 six, six, six if you want. Of course, that's a bad luck emulator. But when you write your script, make sure you put 6666. Six, six, six. And actually, it's four sixes, not three sixes, so I guess it's not really bad luck. How about sevens? Seven, 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 seven. Any number works. You can make a different number combination if you want to. Just make sure the port's open. 5555 five, five, five is generally open. So, if I launch it right now, I'm going to run it on the 5555 emulator, and if I do that, then I'm going to see it on this one. If this one is 5555, but actually, I think I ran it on the wrong one. 
Oh, it was running. It was running before. I just stopped it from running. Uh, but hopefully, I'm going to shut this emulator down because I don't, really don't need it anymore. And I'm going to make sure my 5.5. Five, five, okay, now I'm connected to 5.5.5.5. Five, 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 five. So now if I run it the next time, run it the second time, I actually ran it on the wrong emulator. But if I run it the second time now, I see only one of them in the, in the window here because I only have one emulator loaded right now. It's the VirtualBox emulator, so if I press OK. Here it is. Today is the day. <laughs> now it's running on this emulator. This emulator is just easier. It just runs faster. don't have to use it. You can use the Android emulators. Questions about the emulators? I'm going to pause this video and pass out the ISO file to those people who want it. So let me pause. Actually, I'm going to stop this video.